Welcome to the Misha Basketball in-season training video number five. I'm Kenny Seifert, the coordinator of basketball officiating. I want to commend all of the officials and coaches who have been taking the time this season to view these videos. As a reminder, these videos are being provided to make officiating better and provide information and expectations on how the game is to be officiated. I hope everyone is having a tremendous season. An intentional foul is a personal or technical foul that may or may not be premeditated and is not based solely on the severity of the act. As number 10 in purple breaks the press while crossing the division line, number 12 in white grabs the jersey in order to prevent a two-on-one fast break. Examples of intentional fouls include, but are not limited to, contact that neutralizes an opponent's obvious advantageous position, and contact that is not a legitimate attempt to play the ball or the player specifically designed to stop the clock or keep it from starting. This action meets both examples, especially based upon the time and the score of the game. Great hustle, patience, and mechanics by the center official on this play. With the new throw-in rule this year, after the two free throws, the throw-in spot will be at one of the four newly designated throw-in spots closest to where the foul occurred, in this case, the nearest 28-foot mark. Number 35 in Blue's contact was definitely not a legitimate play on the ball, was unsafe, and excessive. This is an obvious intentional foul. Nice hustle and whistles by both the lead and center officials. In addition, they did a very good job of discussing the situation prior to concluding that it was intentional. Based upon the nature of the foul, it is imperative that the officials move quickly towards the players involved in the play to prevent any dead ball actions prior to getting together to discuss the situation. After the two free throws, one of the four closest throw-in spots would be three feet outside of the left lane line. Nice work. This play was used in an earlier video pointing out the displacement foul by number five in white on the rebound. Today, we want to discuss when and when not to call a foul for diving on a player in the process of trying to create a jump ball. In this play, number 34 in red does an outstanding job of getting to the ball first prior to any excessive body contact on number five in white. Although the action resulted in both players being on the floor with number 34 in red being on top, this action would not be considered a foul. If he dives on his opponent first while trying to create the jump ball, then it is a foul. Tremendous reaction by the players and the officials after the whistle was blown to make sure no extracurricular action occurred. Kicking the ball is intentionally striking it with any part of the leg or foot. The key word is intentionally. As number three in red is making a backdoor basket cut, number zero in white is trying to recover and not get beat. In the process, Number 23 in red makes a bounce pass that goes directly off of number zero's foot and then bounces off of his teammate's foot. Since this contact was not intentional, it is not a violation. Good whistle discipline by the officiating crew for not penalizing this action. This is not a violation. Number 10 in white did not intentionally kick the ball. Her teammate simply threw the ball off of her foot. This is not a violation. Number 21 in purple did not intentionally kick the ball. Number 11 in white simply threw it off of his leg. Good whistle discipline. Unlike the three previous plays, number 12 in black intentionally raises her right leg to make contact with the ball. The center official moved himself into a great position to see this play and used proper mechanics in making the call. Stopped the clock, gave the kicking motion, and pointed to the throw-in spot. Since it was a violation, the closest throw-in spot would be three feet outside of the left lane line. One of the areas of the game that we must improve in is illegal hand checking and body bumping. We still have too much illegal hand arm contact and illegal body bumping on ball handlers that is affecting their rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. Make a concerted effort to get on top of these plays early and with consistency before it becomes a problem later in the game. Excessive hand check and body bumping results in frustrated players and coaches that can lead to other issues. The players and coaches should and will adjust once they know what is acceptable and what is not. Please enforce the rule as the rule is written. One should notice on this open court drive down the floor that the body contact of number 3 in white negatively affects the rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness of number 23 in black. This is a foul and a good call by the trail official who patiently let the play start, develop, and finish prior to blowing his whistle. 
Great mechanics by stopping the clock, signaling the type of foul, and identifying the throw-in spot location, which is one of the four newly designated throw-in spots. This communication is incredibly beneficial to his partners. As number 22 in white dribbles towards the center of the court, number 11 in purple jumps out and makes illegal body contact that hinders number 11's rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. Both the center and trail officials appropriately have whistles on this play. Since the play was coming towards the center official, he appropriately took the play to the table. The trail official did an outstanding job of blowing and holding his signal, allowing the center official to complete the process. Tremendous team officiating. As number two in red attempts to drive baseline, number 11 in white illegally hinders his rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness with both his hands and his body. Another example of proper mechanics. Stop the clock, signal the type of foul, and identify the throw-in spot location. We want to also point out how the lead official ran around and not through the players on his way to the foul reporting area. Once arriving at the foul reporting area, he stopped and provided all the information to the table. Nice work. If number four in red had continued to maintain her legal guarding position, she most likely would have drawn a player control foul on number 25 in white. Unfortunately, she extended her arms and hands horizontally into the vertical body space of her opponent and made contact. This is a hand check foul and a very good call by the center official who not only had a patient whistle as he watched the play start, develop, and finish, he used proper mechanics. Excellent officiating. This is outstanding officiating. This is illegal contact and it is a foul. The reach in and reach through the body of the dribbler affected his rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. It is imperative that we get these fouls, especially early in the contest. Notice the time of the game. If we pass on these types of illegal actions early, the game will continue to deteriorate as it progresses and it will become increasingly difficult to officiate. Remember, blow the whistle on illegal actions that places the opponents at a disadvantage. I hope this video has been helpful. Remember what our responsibilities are as officials. Work hard, communicate professionally, and blow the whistle on illegal actions. I hope your season is going well and you are staying the course with your officiating efforts.